People tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and President. I both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have lever become. Of power. But listen. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. If you guys didn't see the interview with Brett Bear, man, oh man, Kamala. See, that wasn't that bad, right, Kamala? It wasn't that bad. You survived it. It's only Fox. <laughs> this is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake. He ate your lunch. Goodness gracious. This got to be the end. I thought the 60 minute um, interview with Whitaker, I thought that was going to be the end. But we found out that 60 Minutes and CBS, they edit some of your answers so to give you a little leeway. But this one right here on Fox, Brett Bear did not let you do no filibustering, did not do the same old talking points. He went straight in and unraveled you. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a is, number. Do you but, think it's but, 1 million, 3 million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and, Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not apprehensions, finished. I'm not finished. We have a, we have it's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Did you see the old lady here? She, she was screeching and shaking and raising her voice. Oh, my God. This is the president you want? Oh my goodness. You see, she was trying to get that, um, she was trying to get that moment, you know, the same thing that she did to Pence. Excuse me, I'm talking. She tried to get that moment and try to embarrass Brett, but he was not having it. Madam Vice President, but you call let's not Donald Trump. The significance you, you, you of that. You call Donald Trump, um, He's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable, Brett. Uh, he's not well. well. You say he's he, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room. And he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe were Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump but is. But you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is. After George Clooney said within a few minutes of talking to President Donald Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought Brett, this was not the Brett, same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate Trump stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump. He was respectful, but he did not give you that same old lead way that all everybody else was giving you. You know, let you talk that same talking point. He just went, you know what? Da, 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 da. Stop, 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 stop. Answer the question. So... You're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. 
and like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. Now, one of my favorite questions he asked was this one right here. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. So are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. He said she don't can't answer the question. She cannot answer the question. I'm going to follow the law. Matter of fact, Donald Trump did it. Oh, uh, my God. She cannot say anything without saying Donald Trump. And she's the same one that keeps saying Donald Trump is the one that's demonizing people. She cannot, she cannot articulate her position without saying Donald Trump. Who are you? Who are you, Kamala? Oh, I'm definitely not Donald Trump. Well, goddamn, we know that. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, no, do you no, no, owe no, those I families think it's really, I think an it's apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It's right there, man. See, this is why people don't want to go on Fox News, because they're too smart for the part. He put that clip on that lady talking about her child being ravaged by illegal immigrants. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States it was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter, Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. And here's Kamala. She tried to put two laws together. When you first came in, you undid a lot of Trump executive orders. And that's when all the immigrants came in. But you keep trying to use that um, that bipartisan bill that four Democrats did not sign on. You want to keep using that as that is the reason why all the immigrants came in. You came in and undid a lot of Donald Trump um, executive orders. And this is why we have the problem. And now, maybe, what, eight months ago, Mr. Biden put back those executive orders because they saw it was it was too much. Here's another clip. If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade... People have become, but listen. <laughs> Brett, bear arms. You have the right to bear arms. He did not let up on her. And this is good. See, all that friendly interviews you were doing before, it did not serve you well. This one right here kind of served you well. It gave you a little toughness, but it's a little bit too late. You should have done this years ago. You should have done that months ago. But no, you try to avoid Fox News like the plague. And now when you had to finally come on, you out of practice and you look like a fool. See, you were trying to hide away from 
all the media, all the tough questions. Now you have to answer the tough questions and you don't know what you're saying. Yeah. So let's cue up the fat lady. Come on up. Come on up here. Yes. Clear throat, please. And start singing for Kamala. Oh, damn. Lizzo did lose some weight, huh? Shout out to you, Lizzo. You're looking cute, girl. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys, man. Watch the rest of the video. Hit that like button. I'll see you next time.